Okay, you lovely humans, welcome back to my channel. I am so glad that you are here for another fun video. So I am Katie and you are currently watching my The Haunted Lighthouse Historians 31 Days of Vlogtober and we are at day number 14. So, so close to the very center of our of our 31 day extravaganza. So our prompt from yesterday's video was kids will save the day. So this guy right here. So I wanted to hear about your favorite movies that incorporate a group of kids that are, you know, kind of tasked in, in saving the town, saving their family, you know, kind of have a lot of weight on their shoulders to be able to de defeat some kind of a foe. So I will be getting to my picks here in just a couple minutes, and I do have a couple of them. But I want to do, of course, my musical song choice for the day. This is a song from one of my favorite albums. It is from the Practical Magic soundtrack. And this song not only reminds me of the wonderful movie itself, but it reminds me of one of my favorite human beings of all time. And that is my beautiful cousin, Aaron, who absolutely adores Stevie Nicks. And so this is a Stevie Nicks track. It's called Crystal. And like I said, it's, it's featured in the Practical Magic uh, movie soundtrack. And my cousin Aaron is genuinely one of my favorite people on this planet. Um, she feels more like a sister to me than, you know, a cousin. And she is now living over in Massachusetts. She kind of picked up and moved out of Ohio. She's living the dream, you know, being on her own and tackling the world. And I'm so freaking proud of her, but I miss her every single day. So today's prompt is dedicated to her. And uh, let's just take a little listen to Stevie Nicks' Crystal. And I knew in the crystalline knowledge of you drove me through the mountain, through the crystal like a glimpse. That's so pretty. That's all I'm giving you. So you're going to have to look this one up yourself. So as I always do, I pull my songs off of Spotify so it is easily accessible there. You could probably find it on Apple Music. You can find, you know, versions of it on YouTube. So definitely check out Crystal by Stevie Nicks. And another big shout out to my cousin Aaron. I love you so much. I hope that you are doing well with wherever you are and whatever you're doing today. So I'm going to move on to my book recommendation. And that is for a another repeat author. I had him available on one of my first Vlogtober videos. Uh, and that's Mark Nesbitt. And he did the Ghost of Gettysburg um, collection of books. Like I said, there's about eight of those out currently. And he's also done several other books. So today's book is actually a combination that he wrote with Patty A. Wilson. And this is called The Big Book of Pennsylvania Ghost Stories. And it's this beauty right here. So I picked this up when I was in Gettysburg, when I went on the Mark Nesbitt Ghosts of Gettysburg uh, tour that they have out there. So I got to meet the gentleman. I got to really fangirl out around him because he, he, I was just so excited because he has been a part of a lot of things that I love. He's been on an episode of Ghost Adventures, you know, when they were in Gettysburg. He's been on a podcast that I've listened to. Um, I think I mentioned it before, the Why Is This Place So Haunted um, Gettysburg episode that I just think is so great. And He's just a really great guy in general. He's originally from Ohio. He moved to Pennsylvania and he was a park ranger for the Gettysburg National Battlefield. And then, you know, being there and hearing stories, having his own experiences, he was able to kind of delve more into the ghost aspect of Gettysburg. And I just, I absolutely adore him. Like I said, if you have an opportunity to see him speak or to pick up one of his books, his many collection of books, I would definitely do so. And I'm, I haven't really delved too far into Patty. Um, it does note that she is a very prominent 
um, ghost author that she writes a lot about paranormal things. So I'm going to definitely have to look her up a bit more. But the book is great because it is segmented into different regions of Pennsylvania. So obviously it's the big book of Pennsylvania ghost stories. So it starts over on the easternmost part of Pennsylvania with Philadelphia and any other local eastern areas. It then moves over to central Pennsylvania and then into Gettysburg itself because Gettysburg is kind of south central Pennsylvania where it's located. And there are 38 stories alone about Gettysburg. So they're talking about um, Devil's Den and they're talking about Jenny Wade and uh, 36 other stories. So it is just a wonderful collection. If you are looking for um, you know, some information about ghost stories. If you are traveling to the area, if you're from the state and you're just kind of looking at what's available to maybe go visit or just read up some more information on, this book is absolutely amazing. So like I said, it, it goes from Philadelphia to Central to, to Gettysburg, and then we get Pittsburgh and Western Pennsylvania and then Northern Pennsylvania. So the whole massive state is covered in this book. And like I said, there are so many wonderful stories. Um, I know in the past I've read little selections from books, but these stories are a bit longer and I don't want to take up too much time on the video doing that. So unfortunately, you're going to have to look up the book and you'll have to uh, read those tales yourself. But again, this book is absolutely wonderful. I highly recommend this, The Big Book of Pennsylvania Ghost Stories by Mark Nesbitt and Patty A. Wilson. So you will definitely, definitely get a lot of wonderful information, and I think you're going to really enjoy this one. So that is my book recommendation for today. So let us move on to our movie recs today. So I actually have three of them for you. The first one I'm going to talk about is a 1987 film. Um, that I actually didn't even get to see until maybe four years ago. I never saw it when I was a kid, and I think it would have it would have affected me even more if I would have, but I still found a lot of joy in this movie. So this is actually The Monster Squad, and like I said, it was came out in 1987, and it is a very 80s film. Uh, the whole storyline is a group of kids that kind of come in contact with Dracula and his gang of monsters and they really gangs all here they put all of those classical universal monsters in this film so of course they can't have the exact likeness as Universal has copyright to all of that or trademark rights to all of that but you can still tell who they are you know you know who Dracula is you know who the Gill Man is you know the creature from the Black, Black Lagoon you know who the mummy is you know who a wolf man is um, and then you've got the Frankenstein monster who kind of plays a dual role where he's kind of starts off as a bad guy, but he, uh, you know, becomes a, a spy and goes over into the kid's side and becomes a, a, a good character. So I absolutely love this story. I love the Dracula is the leader of the monsters and he's bringing them all together to bring about the destru destruction of the world. And, you know, it's not the first story that's put Dracula as the leader of the monsters. There is a very, very important made-for-TV film that came out back in 1978 or 79. I can never remember that date. But it was called <laughs> The Halloween That Almost Wasn't. And I am going to be getting further details into that here in my 31 days of Logtober, so look forward to that. But that's one of my very favorite pieces of cinema I've, I've ever watched. And uh, I know a couple people, um, two in, in, in particular, who also have a, a very big affinity for that movie. And we quote it all the time, and it's, it's just fabulous. So like I said, I will be getting to that story here further into my, my series, but um, Monster Squad, like I said, is absolutely delightful. They have all of those universally characters, and they also bring in Van Helsing's character. They have, you know, the quirky old German man that helps them defeat the monsters. They've got the little girl to kind of tug at your heartstrings and that, you know, she absolutely falls in love with the Frankenstein monster and he in turn falls in love with her. But it, it goes well in this movie. He doesn't throw her in the water in this movie. So 
all is well. Don't worry. But the whole the whole thing in, in general is just fabulous. So if you have not seen The Monster Squad, I highly recommend you go out and watch it. It is currently streaming on Sling, Fubo, Amazon Prime, and Philo. Um, or you can you can rent it or buy it through all of the normal channels. And uh, I, like I said, I don't I don't know what else to say about this movie except that it's witty and the dialogue is very funny. They give the, those kids some of the funniest lines, um, especially the Wolfman's Got Nards line that I think everybody, if you hear about. Monster Squad. That's always the line that comes up. But there's also other really funny moments in this movie. So if you've not seen this, I de definitely recommend you checking it out. And like I said, I wasn't a kid when I saw it to begin with, but I still absolutely enjoyed it. It is a an emotional ride and uh, it makes you laugh and pulls at your heartstrings at the end. So definitely check out The Monster Squad. My second choice for today Day is um, a little bit of a sleeper hit and it's only available on Shutter to stream currently and I think that if you have the Amazon Shutter linked on your Amazon Prime account you can watch it through there as well but this is a movie called Summer of 84 and oh my gosh guys this may be my favorite movie of 2018 it kind of came out of nowhere Shutter got the rights to it and really kind of pushed it when it first came out and I think that this movie premiered at Sundance initially, was a bit of a critical hit. And so they decided to, like I said, put it on Shudder. And it is one of those movies where I will just refer to over and over again. Every time I watch it, I have to tweet about it because I just absolutely love it. And the funny thing is, one of the writers of this movie, Matt Leslie, he will always like anything that I tweet about Summer of 84. With, without fail, I always get a like from him. So I don't know if he's got a, like a, maybe an alert that says when somebody mentions Summer of 84, or if he's just constantly checking to see if anybody has updated about it. But I think that he's uh, very proud of this work, and he definitely should be, because I'm, I'm telling you, this movie surprised me. There were so many elements to this movie that were so, um, such a beautiful homage to the, the genre itself. And, uh, I can't, I can't think of anything else, um, like uh, words to describe how wonderful this movie is. So it follows a group of kids. Um, Davey is the lead, the lead character and he lives next door to this prominent cop in town. And, something just seems to be a little off about this guy. You can't really figure out what it is at first. And then you're alerted to there, there is a serial killer in the next town over in Cape May. So it's called, he's called the Cape May Slayer and these boys keep disappearing. And so the whole thing is kind of twinged and you kind of feel like this guy that you really can't get a good feel for. He may be involved with these kids disappearances. And so you don't really know what to expect from one, one moment to the next. And I really love a story that kind of keeps you on the edge of your feet because much like in Fright Night, you know, when the, the main character is telling his, his mom that, you know, the next door neighbor is a vampire. And so she, like a typical parent in these types of movies, calls the guy over to the house and says, oh no, no, they're fine. You're just overreacting. It's the same way with this movie where, you know, the kids are kind of uh, doing their own detective work to see if they can catch this guy either in the act of, of kidnapping and killing somebody or just find some evidence that this guy is directly involved. And so when the kids do discover some, some, uh, evidence in, in, in a capacity, they present it to their parents. The parents are like, nah, you're trespassing and this is awful. And so they basically march the kids over to the neighbor to have them apologize to him. So now the neighbor is aware that they're suspecting him for this role. And it, it just goes into overdrive, you know, from that point on. And I was not expecting the end of this movie. I mean, there are, you know, little clues and they kind of like build up to the, the resolution. But 
things happened at the end of that movie that I was not expecting. I was ap actually quite shocked about. Um, and the way that they kind of ended it in general leaves you with kind of a, a bit of a feeling of unrest, but I, I can't recommend this movie enough. Honestly, guys, I, it is one of my favorite movies from 2018, if not my favorite. And I think that it was vastly overlooked by a majority of fans of this genre. So if you have not seen Summer of 84 yet, and you don't have Shudder, first of all, shame on you. But second of all, if you have Shudder and you've not seen it, turn your Shudder on right now and watch that movie because it is incredible. And it is the movie, um, along with The Witch in the Window, that I kind of go back and forth with on Shudder because Shudder is like every other streaming service where they bring movies on, they take movies off, and they're always adding things, you know, over time. So sometimes if I'm just kind of in a lull where nothing else looks good on Shudder, I'll go ahead and put on one of those two movies because thank goodness, without fail, they've pretty much stayed on the, on the streaming service. So if I can watch either one of those movies, I consider my uh, Shudder <laughs> subscription to be well worth the money. So definitely recommend you check out Summer of 84. The kids are fabulous. The, the acting in general in this movie is wonderful. The directing, the writing, everything about this movie is utterly brilliant. And I definitely want to, to have you guys check this movie out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I think that there's also a DVD available. So if you wanted to watch it, you know, at home on your own time, you could probably pick that up on Amazon, I think. But definitely find a way to watch this movie because you will absolutely love it. And my third choice for a movie today is actually Super 8. So it's this guy right here. And this one came out in 2011. And it stars Kyle Chandler. Uh, Elle Fanning is in this. And so is, let me get the other kid's name, Joel Courtney. Joel Courtney plays the other main, main kid in this movie. Um, and so the whole premise of the story is it's a small town in Ohio. And the, the main character, Joe, and his dad... Uh, it starts off at the funeral for their, for his mom. So she passed away in a workplace accident. She was actually covering for, covering a shift for like the, the local town drunk. And uh, so she passes away on the shift. And so the father and a lot of people in town blame him for the death of, of this character. And uh, so it starts off on a pretty low note, you know, it's uh neighbors against neighbors and it's just kind of got a sense of sadness overall but it moves on to the son joe he has a group of friends and they are in the process of making a monster movie so some people may say that this is more of a sci-fi movie instead of a horror movie but i will argue that they are making a horror movie inside the movie so they are making a super eight film so that's why this movie is called super eight because they are creating this movie and they catch some pretty epic footage on their Super 8 film. So the whole thing is, like I said, it's a sci-fi story because it, it is about mo an alien. But the whole premise of this is kind of seeped in, in horror elements that I absolutely love. And so the kids are making this horror movie. They're out late one night. They're by the train tracks. They go to an old train station and they see, oh, okay, we're going to get some footage of a train actually coming through to, you know, up the production value of their movie. And so while they're watching this train come through, they see a truck that's kind of heading towards the train. Truck rams into the train, train derails. And so you don't really get a good look, but it looks like something escapes from one of the train cars. And so that starts the whole chain of events where you find out that it was in fact an alien and uh, the kids are pretty much tasked with finding where the alien went and uh, capturing it and uh, taking care of the whole town in that respect. So like I said, this is very akin to the Goonies or Stand By Me in that the kids have such a beautiful dynamic together. They, they seem like they are friends, that they've known each other forever. And I really loved the elements in this movie that they brought in. You know, the alien um, effects, the electrical aspects in the town. All the dogs kind of take off 
and then can't and they can't be found and then people start disappearing throughout the small town so very creepy very well acted the whole the whole plot is wonderful the storyline and dialogue is great between the kids and i just absolutely love this movie and it's like i said the same kind of a situation where these kids have this happen to them they try to alert the the parents in town nobody believes them so it's basically up to them to figure out what's going on and uh and take it from there because they find out that the person in the truck that rammed the train was actually their science teacher and uh you you hear more about him you know later on in the movie but it, it's just an absolutely wonderful film it's one of those movies where if it's on tv i'll drop everything i'm doing and i will watch that movie so i definitely think if you've not seen super eight you need to rectify that immediately and check that that movie out because you will absolutely love it so like i said my third pick is super eight so i'm going to move on to my tv choice for today and that it might be a little bit of a uh I don't know. It may be a bit controversial because I know a lot of people either really thought this, this show was great or they thought it was terrible, but I kind of fell into the first category, at least with the first season. The second season was a little bit contrived, but I am talking about the TV show Scream Queens, which aired on Fox and it was from 2015 to 2017 and it had a pretty good cast. The show was created by the same creators of American Horror Story. So Ryan Murphy and Brad Felchick. And they, you can definitely tell these guys are the same people that are associated with American Horror Story. Based on the dialogue, based on the goriness and the, uh, the overall elements that kind of fill this show. But it is hilarious it has beautiful horror tropes that any fan of the genre will appreciate. And uh, you just can't wait to see some of these people get murdered because they're awful characters. These, the, the whole story is it's set at a fictional college and Kappa Kappa Tau, the sorority, is uh, the main character, basically. So you've got the queen sorority snob, Chan Chantel, or Chanel, and she uh, <laughs> has a, a group of minions under her who she's lovingly referred to as Chanel numbers one through six. And so they don't have their own names anymore. They all go by Chanel number four, Chanel number five. And you have the one of the main character girls, I guess I would say, is Skylar Samuels. And she plays Grace, who it's her first year on campus. Her mother was a Kappa Kappa Tau, and so she wants to follow in her footsteps and be in the sorority. So she brings along her friend who is played by Kiki Palmer and <laughs> it, 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 it's awful. Like these girls in the sorority are absolutely horrendous. And so you just keep waiting for something bad to come and happen to these girls. And of course it does because in these kind of shows, it's kind of a kill of the week where people are getting knocked off and you're trying to figure out who the bad guy is. So the the antagonist in this this show is called the Red Devil because the Red Devil is the mascot for the university that they attend. And so it was kind of a quick and easy um, decision to make that the, you know, the overall bad guy in a mask kind of situation. And so you have Emma Roberts who plays Chanel, the awful nasty Chanel. And then you've got Billy Lord and Abigail Breslin who play her two main uh, Chanel's that are kind of directly under her. Um, Ariana Grande was also in the series, but she gets kind of murdered early on in the series. Nick Jonas is in this movie, in this TV show, Kiki uh, Palmer, like I said, Oliver Hudson, Niecy Nash, and um, the real scream queen of the show, Jamie Lee Curtis is in this. She plays the dean of the, of the college, uh, Dean Munch, Kathy Munch is her name, fitting. And so the whole, the whole series is 
like I said, you're just waiting for the next person to get bumped off because you just have no attachment to hardly any of these characters. Uh, I think arguably Skylar Samuel's character and Kiki Palmer's are the most likable and the ones that you root for the most. But they come in with this kind of, you know, you have your pledges that come in. And Leah Michelle is another one of the pledges. She is kind of a creepy, weird character. So you get off vibes from her from the very beginning. And uh, it's just the progression of seeing these deaths take place and wondering who's going to be next every single week. So I really enjoyed this this TV show for what it was. It's really kooky. Some of the deaths are absolutely brutal. A woman gets her head bo like boiled in oil, um, like deep fried oil. And then uh, another girl gets her head mowed over by a lawnmower. And uh, just, you know, like such weird, like what, what is going on kind of kills. But <laughs> for a TV show on Fox, to incorporate these kind of things. I always thought it was shocking because I thought American Horror Story could get away with it because it was on FX, which is more of a cable type of channel. But Fox was having those same kind of American Horror Story kills, but put on their network instead. And I thought that was very strange. But like I said, there was two seasons of this. The first season was took place at the university. The second place, they changed everything around and they moved it to a hospital and the story's a bit contrived. I did watch the whole season. It, it was kind of a American Horror Story situation where I, some of the episodes I was like, oh geez, this is so, I just can't get into this. But I'd push through and get to the next episode. And so it was kind of a yo-yo effect for me for that second season where I liked it, but then I was like, oh my god, this is just ridiculous. But second season brought in John Stamos Taylor Lautner and uh, Kirstie Alley as main characters. So they are not shy from bringing in the big names. I think Brooke Shields also has a cameo in that season as well. So, you know, they didn't skimp on the, the cast and it definitely shows because it is a very enjoyable show. It's just a little kooky in ways. So it is streaming right now. I think I watched it on Hulu and, uh, there's 23 episodes total. They are hour long episodes. So you'll have to devote a couple days to watch the whole thing, but highly enjoyable. You know, you don't mind the people getting killed off. Cause like I said, they're so unlikable. You're just like, just do it already. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I guess that's kind of good when you're watching a, you know, a TV show that's based on horror where, you know, somebody's going to get bumped off. So it might as well be the people that you just don't care about at all. So I, I recommend you watch Scream, Scream Queens if you have not. It is definitely something that will uh, keep you laughing, if nothing else, through this uh, the rest of this Halloween season. So I'm going to end it there, I think, today. Let's go ahead and move on to our prompt for tomorrow. Ugh. And tomorrow's prompt is based on a true story. So... Like a lot of these things, when they say they're based on a true story, they may take one element of a story and then just kind of go off the deep end with it. But I do want to hear about a movie in the horror genre that is based on a true story that you really, really enjoy. So I will give you an example, the Amityville horror. So I'm not going to pick Amityville, but that's one that you could, you could, you know, say is based on a true story. You know, it's based on the case files of Ed and Lorraine Warren, but they definitely took liberties with that movie. So that's what I want to hear about tomorrow. And uh, I look forward to hearing all about your, uh, your ideas. And I guess I will see you here same time, same place. Thank you again for watching my videos. I I'm so grateful for every single one of you. And uh, if you like it, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet, because then it'll alert you every time I post a new video. I'm currently in the process of compiling a video on my leaf peeping adventures. So I'm hoping that that will be something I uh, will be wanting to share with you here shortly because we are slowly getting into peak season right here in Northwest Ohio. So I'm finding a lot of beauty every single time I go out on one of my adventures. So stay tuned for that. 
And uh, as of right now, I guess we're going to just, like I said, end this. And I will see you guys in the next video. Love you so much. And I uh, will talk to you.